If news of the World Bank's cut to the global growth forecast made you antsy, the bad news is that Putrajaya expects the slow economic growth to impact the local economy. The good news is that the government says it's holding fast to its promise for continued fiscal consolidation. In fact, Putrajaya remains confident that Malaysia will still achieve its targeted 4 to 4.5% growth this year. Second Finance Minister Datuk Sri Ahmad Husni Hanad Zala said that the government fiscal deficit is expected to decrease to 3.1% of GDP in 2016. He said that all government departments are required to be prudent in their spending and limit official visits overseas, which should sue some critics. And that implementation of high economic multiplier projects such as the MRT should provide a boost. Rubber glove giant Top Glove Corp Baha has gotten the green light from the powers that be for a secondary listing on the main board of the Singapore Stock Exchange. However, the road to SGX is not completely free and clear as the listing comes with several conditions, which include maintaining its primary listing on Bursa Malaysia and a written document stating that it would comply with the listing manual set out by the SGX. Top Glove had announced its intention to do the dual listing back in March. According to the company, it would enhance Top Glove's investor reach and diversify its investor base by allowing direct participation from those interested in the island nation. As such, it would allow Top Glove a new platform for potential future fundraising as well as merger and acquisition exercises. If you are a Malaysian with property investments in the UK, Britain's possible exit or Brexit from the European Union should make you sweat. According to Allianz SE Chief Economist Michael Heese, a Brexit would result in a significant drop in the British pound. He said that they could see a substantial drop of 10%, possibly all the way to 20%, which would hurt the real estate market in London. Allianz SE foresees a 30-40% to 40% risk that Brexit could happen. A Knight Frank report published in November last year showed that Malaysians are the third largest Asian investors into the UK and Aussie property markets in 2014 and 2015. How much did Malaysians invest? 5.61 billion US dollars. Malaysians aren't shopping as much as they used to, a new report says, surprising absolutely no one. A report published by retail group Malaysia showed that Malaysian retail sales contracted by 4.4% for the period Jan to March 2016, the worst since 2nd Q 2015. It seemed nobody was spared with the numbers showing that Malaysians spent less on everything, ranging from clothing to groceries. Contributing to weak sales was the price of retail goods and services, which has been climbing gradually since the start of 2016 as the ringgit got weaker. RGM's MD Tan Hai Sin said that this just further deteriorated the spending power of Malaysian consumers. Doing the worst was the department store category, which contracted by 15%. Only the specialty stores grew by 1.1%. As such, RGM revised retail sales numbers downwards from 4% to below 3.5%. Property developer LBS Bina Group Bahad is planning to avoid the property market slump by concentrating on landed properties for the year ahead. Managing Director Tan Sri Lim Hock San pointed out that landed remain the best sellers. However, he played coy on where exactly the launches would be, simply saying that they already have something in mind. Lim is confident that with unveiled sales of 1.11 billion ringgit as of May and its new 2016 project launches in the pipeline, that the company will reach its 1.2 billion ringgit sales target. Meanwhile, LBS is also mulling a management change over a 51.19% owned ML Global Bahad. According to Lim, some of LBS's senior management may take up residence in the roof tile manufacturer, given that LBS has increased its stake in ML Global following a mandatory takeover offer. An offer that an independent advisor had called not fair and not reasonable.